making more pokey okay the old coot here coming back at you with another exciting video so if you've been following along in this video series about 48 hours ago i made my marinade which was one part soy sauce one part rice vinegar one part honey and basically it's one tablespoon of each per pound of either tuna or salmon or whatever it is that you want to make your pokey with what I did was I bought my tuna frozen. So it takes about two days in the refrigerator to thaw it out. That's the best way to do it. And this is a different one than the one that I showed in a previous video, but basically yellowfin tuna, this is AAA grade. You can find these at most supermarkets, like in the frozen food section, you kind of get a sense of what's going on there. If you want to use salmon or whatever, basically the concept is if you buy it frozen, stick it in the refrigerator, let it defrost on its own. It takes about two days or 48 hours. In the meantime, I made my sauce, which was the soy sauce, rice vinegar, and honey. One part of each per pound. So one tablespoon of each, one tablespoon soy sauce, one tablespoon rice vinegar, one tablespoon of honey per pound of fish that I'm going to basically make the, the stuff out of. And then what I also did was I put in one part garlic, which is one tablespoon of garlic per pound, and also two parts ginger, because I like that really strong ginger flavor. So two tablespoons of ginger per pound of fish. Keep this in the fridge, right? Let it do its thing in the fridge. Let all these flavors come together. Now, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up this beautiful tuna loin. This is the center cut yellowfin tuna loin. I'm going to cut this up into... I would say about, give or take three quarters of an inch to one inch thick steaks, basically. And then those steaks I'm going to cut up into about one inch cubes. So let me pause the video for a second. I'll show you all what that looks like here. Let's pause for a sec. Okay, so here we are. I just made three cuts, right? These are about three quarters of an inch to an inch thick. It's okay if your tuna is still a little par frozen, or if you're using salmon, if your salmon is still like just barely on the brink of being frozen or being defrosted, that's totally fine. What you want to do is you want to get these nice little like one inch thick steaks. And then from here now, I'm going to cut these up into cubes and then put them in my poke sauce that I made and then stick this whole thing back in the fridge. It's very important to keep your tuna or your salmon or whatever it is that you're using cold. So that's why you take it out of the fridge dice it up, put it in the marinade, put it all back into the fridge. So let me pause for a sec. I'll show you what the cubes look like here in a second. And we're back. So again, here we go. Basically, I took the steak, right? I took the one inch steak that I cut, cut that into cubes. Doesn't have to be perfect as long as you have these nice little cubes. Very cool, very cold. As mentioned, it came out of the fridge. Try to do this somewhat, you know, with the urgency of speed in mind, because you want to get your cubes of fish or tuna in this case, right? My tuna loin into that marinade. I'll give this a good stir and then throw this all into the fridge when it's all in there. So let me pause the video again real quick. I'll, I'll continue to process this entire loin of tuna, right? Triple A grade. Like I said, you could use tuna. Just try to get the good stuff. The importance of freezing it or having it frozen is that you kill off the parasites, the bacteria uh, that may be present during the handling process, et cetera, et cetera. And then defrosting it for two days in the refrigerator for that 48 hours basically brings it back up to temperature so that it's easy to, easier to work with. So it's easy for me to slice through this tuna loin to get the steaks and then it's easy for me to slice through this. So keep everything cold. You don't want to ruin it by introducing bacteria into your final product. So that's why it's important to have a clean cutting board, clean surface, clean knife, you know, as, as prep it, you know, clean as you go that way that you can ensure the highest quality of poke as the final product when you're also, when it's all said and done. So let me pause the video again real quick. I'll process all of this, throw it into the marinade, give it a good stir and you can see what it all looks like. Okay. And we're back. So basically I got through about half of my loin which is about what I had planned for for this container. You know, having a good container or two of good size, that way you have room to move and work around in here. But all I wanna do is just basically stir that nice, beautiful tuna inside of the marinade. And obviously I've got way more marinade than I need. So I know that I can cut off another two or three steaks, cut those into cubes and put them in. So you kinda of get a sense of what's going on here. But now the trick is, to get once this is all stirred around nice and tossed in there 
Now the trick is to get this into the fridge and basically let it go for about three hours just to kind of marinate itself and then have really good poke. The longer you let it sit, obviously the more flavor is going to be incorporated back into the tuna. I would say realistically, this will probably stay in the fridge. Like if you kept it in the fridge for about two days, about 48 hours, anything past that, you know, you start getting into the brink of like freshness and, you know, just overall taste and quality and everything else. So usually within about two days is when is the time frame of like me and my roommate eating this. Sometimes I'll give some to the neighbors or to family or friends or whatever the case may be just to kind of, you know, depends how much I want to make and depends on how much I want to give away, you know, budget, all that kind of stuff. But I would say this is a poke is a great meal. You can have it for lunch. You can have it for dinner. You know, what I would do to finish this off is maybe some cilantro in there, maybe some furikake, right? The dried seaweed with the dried bonito as like a garnish. You could put your sauces, you could put wasabi, eel sauce, teriyaki sauce. If you have like a poke sauce that you like, you could kind of make it whatever you want to make it a poke bowl you could do this over lettuce make a salad out of it you could do this over some steamed rice that has been cooled and chilled or brown rice you know whatever the case may be so poke is one of those things it's like a taco bar right you can kind of do whatever you want with it so this is about as you can see here this is about i would say i've got maybe like enough for maybe one or two more steaks so just to show you how sharp my knife is because i maintain these Basically, I'm just going to cut like a one inch thick steak, give or take. And as you can see, I'm getting a little bit of resistance there because it is still just a touch par frozen, which is totally fine. But now what I want to do is I want to cut this up into my one inch strips, you know, give or take. Right. And then from here, what I want to do is make my little cubes. Right. So my little like one inch cubes or so. But anyways, if I was doing this with two hands, you'd see it a little bit better, but not too bad for what it is. And then basically now the goal is to try to get this into there. Right. And do the transfer. And I could probably do one more steak with the amount of extra sauce that I have. And like I said, it's it's kind of like one of those things where you'll have to you'll have to do this a few times and experiment, you know, and just see how much juice you need for how much fish you're trying to prepare but the trick is to try to get all of this back into the fridge so that the marinade can take a hold of the fish right turning your poke into that beautifully flavored you know poke that everybody likes and all that stuff and etc but you kind of get an idea what's going on there but as mentioned before usually i find that for one pound of tuna or salmon one tablespoon of soy sauce one tablespoon of rice vinegar and one tablespoon of honey usually is enough liquid for all of this one tablespoon of finely chopped diced garlic and then one table or sorry two parts or two tablespoons of ginger if you don't want as much ginger you could use less uh, there's no there's really no reason to salt this because the soy sauce already has enough sodium in it i even use reduced sodium soy sauce but what you could do is you could add i added goju garu right the red pepper the red pepper powder I put in, you know, I like it kind of spicy. So I put in about a tablespoon per pound, which is kind of spicy. You could use less. You could use like a quarter of a teaspoon would still give you like a little bit of a heat kick. But there are so many things, as mentioned before, that you could add to this to kind of make it your own. See, I've still even got a little more liquid in there. So I could probably do, I could probably do one more steak. And then what I'll do is with the remaining steaks, I'll just do like seared tuna. I could do like a seared ahi tuna and just have that for lunch. Mix that with the salad and do it that way. Or I could do a seared ahi tuna, you know, hot frying pan, one minute on each side, dice it up, let it cool down and then throw it into, you know, a poke sauce and make a poke out of that. So you'd have seared tuna ahi poke or, you know, whatever. But anyways, once this is thawed, you basically have about a day or two to either make poke out of it or cook it or do whatever you want to do. Don't let your fish sit in your fridge for more than like two days because otherwise you start getting on the brink of freshness and all that stuff and you kind of get an idea. Anyways, I'll put as many links as I can down there below in the description. Hope this video out there helps someone. Check out the videos prior to this one if you want to see how we got to this point of making the sauce and everything. I'll put some links down below. I'm the old coot and I'll catch you all in the next exciting video.